the blind man and the girl talk to each other for some time about the hills in Missouri and the landscape outside and the beauty of nature in the month of October and so on. And the writer and the speaker tries his best to prevent the girl from knowing that he is blind. So he keeps himself to his seat without moving. He doesn't even look at her face. But he asks her so many questions. She answers those questions. When the girl asks him why he doesn't look out of the window, the blind man goes to the window, rests his hand on the ledge of the window and looks out pretending to study the landscape outside. After some time, the engine's whistle sounded. That's a signal to show that the train is approaching the next station. And naturally, the carriage wheels change their sound and rhythm. The engine's whistle shakes and the compartment and the carriage wheels change their sound and rhythm. That means the train is slowing down as it is approaching the next station. The girl got up and began to collect her things. The engine's whistle shakes and the compartment and the carriage wheels change their sound and rhythm. That means the train is slowing down as it is approaching the next station. The girl got up and began to collect her things. When the girl realizes that the train is slowing down its speed, she gets up and begins to collect her luggage. Then I wondered if she wore her hair in a bun or if it was plaited or perhaps it was hanging loose over her shoulder or was it cut very short. That time, I had some questions in my mind. The questions were about the kind of hair that she had. So I was wondering whether she wore her hair in a bun or if it was plaited or it was hanging loose over her shoulder or if it was cut very short. But the writer had no means of knowing these things as he was blind and there was no one else to help him know these things as he was alone in the compartment with her. Slowly the train drew into the station. So that means the train has entered the next station that is Sagranpur station where the girl wants to get down. Outside, there were shouting of porters and the vendors and the high-pitched female voice near the carriage door. The voice must have belonged to the girl's aunt. As soon as the train stops, there is so much a noise outside on the platform. The writer, the speaker, hears the shouting of porters. Porters are those who carry luggage. And the vendors, those who sell newspapers, tea and snacks. And plus he also heard the sound of a woman shouting loudly, a high-pitched female voice near the carriage door. And he understood that that must have been the girl's aunt because she had told him that she would be received by the girl's aunt. So there is so much a confusion outside, there is so much a noise outside, he could hear the shouting of porters and vendors and also the, a high-pitched female voice near the carriage door which must have belonged to the girl's aunt. Goodbye, said the girl. So before she gets off the train, gets out of the compartment, she bids him goodbye. She was standing very close to me. So when she bids me goodbye, she is seen standing very, very close to him. So close that the perfume from her hair was tantalizing. So when she comes to that door, she is very, very close to the place where the writer is sitting, where the speaker is sitting. 
and he could get the perfume that was coming from here and the speaker says that it was tantalizing tantalizing bewitching very very attractive i just want to raise my hand and touch her hair at that time but before i could do that she moved away and only the perfume still lingered where she had stood lingered here remained so now before i could touch her hair she just moved away now only the perfume remained where she had stood the girl is not there the girl was away while she was getting out of the compartment there was some confusion in the doorway a man getting into the compartment stammered an apology now the speaker knows that there was some confusion when she was getting out of the compartment because a man who was getting into the compartment stammered an apology he he said sorry to this girl so i understood that there must have been some there must have been some confusion then the door banged shut and the world was shut out again i returned to my berth the guard blew the whistle and we off once again i had a game to play with a new fellow traveler so there was some confusion in the doorway the speaker understood this by hearing the stammered apology of a man who was getting into the compartment the man stammered an apology to the girl so that clearly showed that there was a confusion while she was getting out of the compartment then the door banged shut and the world was shut out again then i returned to my place the guard blew his whistle and the train started moving away from the station once again i had a game to play with a fellow traveler now the speaker tells himself that the train is moving again there is another passenger in the compartment so he has to go back to his game of hiding his blindness from the new traveler so he had a game to play he had a game to play with a new fellow traveler earlier he played that game with the girl he did not allow her to know that he was a blind person now there is another traveler so his game is to prevent him from knowing that he is blind the train gathered speed now the wheels took up their sound that means the train is gathering speed the carriage groaned cried and shook i found the window and sat in front of it staring into the daylight that was darkness for me so i went to the window sat in front of the window looking outside so that nobody would know that i was blind so even though i stared into the daylight everything was a dark for me because i am a blind person so many things were happening outside the window it could be a game guessing what went out on the so i didn't know i could hear some noises coming from outside i could hear boys shouting i thought somebody must be playing some game outside but then i didn't know what it was the man who had entered the compartment broke into my daydream then suddenly my new fellow traveler broke my reverie reverie here day dream i was looking out and trying to guess what was happening outside so this was broken my silence was broken by the statement that the new fellow traveler made to me what does he say he said you must be disappointed oh my dear man you must be disappointed he said i am not as attractive a fellow companion traveling companion as the one who just left so the new fellow traveler tells the speaker that he must be feeling highly disappointed to know that the new fellow traveler is not as attractive as the companion who had left the train at at the previous station i'm not saying that she was i don't know whether she is attractive or not but she was an interesting girl and she had an interesting face but oh my dear friend can you just tell me one thing i have a question about the earlier fellow traveler can you just tell me did she keep her hair long or short oh did you notice it uh, when you came to the compartment she went out of the compartment did you notice her hair did she wear it long or short then the man 
the new fellow traveler said oh i don't remember he said sounding highly confused puzzled he continues by saying that it was her eyes that i noticed not her hair sorry to say that i didn't observe i didn't observe her hair so much but i was fascinated by her eyes she had beautiful eyes but sadly unfortunately those beautiful eyes were of no use to her because she was completely blind didn't you notice that she was a blind person here ends a story so at the end of the story the speaker gets a shock of his life now he comes to know that it was a waste of time for him to have prevented the girl from knowing that he was a blind person because the girl also played a similar game to prevent him from knowing that she was blind so here the man the blind person fails in his game but the girl succeeds